Let's study the behavior of an integral mode control for the same problem that we had before. So here is a buffer attached to a server, and we have a command or control input, controlled input coming in at the rate u. And our goal is to have the uh, y of t, which is the uh, buffer size over time, be matching a rate r, which is uh, constant. And as before, the transfer function is gs is over 1 over s. And I'm showing over here r is the, uh, uh, over here is r is the command input, is the uh, reference value, and y is the buffer size at a particular point in time. OK, great. So uh, remember that the error value e is, is nothing more than y, uh, r minus y. And so integral of e is going to be uh, integral r minus y. And so in our case, we're going to see that the control input u is going to be ki times integral e, and that's going to be ki integral of r minus y dt. And that is uh, what we call the control law. This is the control law that says that the input u should be at any point k minus r, r minus y dt. Intuitively, what's going on is that Let's consider a point in time where y is above r over here. Let's say y is over here. Uh, then in proportional mode control, the amount of control is going to be given by the difference between r and y. So if r deviates more from uh, y deviates more from r, then the amount of control is going to be greater. In the case of integral mode control, what you're looking at is not just the value of y at a particular point in time, but you're looking at the accumulated amount of error over time. So if you look at this particular graph, this is the integral of the difference between r and y over here. And so in this point in time over here, what you're saying is there's been a lot of accumulated error. In other words, we've uh, undershot our buffer for a long period of time. So even though at this point over here, the actual error is zero, we're still going to have a large control action because this value of the integral is actually fairly large at that point in time. In fact, it's a maximum for that excursion of y away from r. So the integral mode control allows us to deal with accumulated error. However, it makes the control a bit, little bit less stable. And so we'll see that this example over here. So here is u given this way. And so if we take the, uh, the Laplace transform, u of s is going to be given as ki uh, r minus y over s, because the integral uh, translates to just 1 over s. And this is going to be the loop gain. So ki over here is a loop gain, which corresponds to the kp we saw over here. Um, now, we to solve this, we need to do a little bit of algebra. We remember that y is going to be uh, 1 over s, that's g over here, times u minus w. And we substitute for u over here, which gives us y as 1 over s, uh, ki r minus y over s minus w. And then if we, if we move stuff around and rearrange it, we get y equals ki over uh, s squared plus ki. Uh, R, this is not really an I, is it? Okay, let's fix that. Uh, minus S over S squared plus KIW. Okay, so uh, in order to see how it behaves, we're going to assume for a moment that the disturbance goes away. So we're going to sort of ignore this part on this right, and we'll focus on this, and we'll say, r is going to be set to a reference value. And let's just say r of t, sorry, it'll make it small. Let's just say r of t is going to be 1, equals 1. This is a constant 1. That makes it a bit easier for us. Then we can just say we, we substitute one, uh, 1, which means r of s is going to be 1 over s. And then y of s is therefore going to be uh, ki over s times s squared plus ki. And if you're going to, if you expand that out, 
This can be written as 1 over s using, using partial fractions minus s over s squared plus ki. And then taking the inverse Laplace transform, yt is going to be given by uh, 1 minus cos square root kit. And let me just draw it before I kind of show the results. So this is time t over here. This is y. The reference value, I'll show that in red, that's 1. And we want r to be like this. And what you're going to get is, let's look at it when time is 0. So when time is 0, the, the value of the output is going to be 1 over there. When uh, when time is uh, something that's what, like uh, 2 pi over square root ki, so that's value over here, 2 pi over square root ki, sorry, pi over square root ki, we're going to uh, get this value to be equal to, uh, uh, this value is going to be negative 1, uh, 1 minus negative 1, so it's going to go to uh, 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 0, uh, and then at uh, it, and, it, and then it's going to be essentially oscillating. So essentially, we're going to get something like this. Uh, I think I'm doing that properly, but 